Hello everybody and welcome again to the channel and I'm so glad you tuned in with us today. I'm Robert Zone, as everybody knows from Value Electronics and today we have a big surprise. We have LG's G2 Gallery Series, the 2022. LG was very kind to us to give us not only the first allocation and the first shipment but to expedite the delivery so we would have it for today's YouTube event here. This is a 2022 model that will be out in other stores in another couple of weeks, but we're starting to sell them right now and deliver them as well. Today we're going to be unboxing this TV, going through the setup and the settings. We have invited Dean Ice, Dwayne Davis, with us today, who's taking peak and peak luminance readings and we'll be comparing them to 2021 and the 2022 C2. Uh, LG has done some very impressive enhancements this year. I know you've probably tuned in and heard us talk about the C2 panel. The whole panel has been upgraded. The subpixels are larger. There's less, there's no space in between them any longer. They're filling the full space. Uh, so there's better color volume. There's better color saturation. There's higher peak lumens. Uh, there's also um, the LG Electronics has a new a9 Gen 2 Gen 5 processor and that processor has been retuned for the new panel as well. This year they added a heat sink very much like Panasonic OLEDs and Sony OLEDs have. Of course each company has their own heat sink and that will cool the panel which will reduce the threat of burn-in. It will also give them the ability to have the processor drive the panel harder for even higher peak lumens. Uh, the G2 has the thin form fit where the back of the TV is the entire same depth across the panel and it's about an inch thick in depth. It wall mounts beautifully with a no gap wall mount so the TV is, it comes with it, it's built in, so the TV touches the wall. It looks very minimalist and modern and kind of, if I may say, very sexy looking when it's wall mounted. Uh, the TV prices have launched very aggressively. LG uh, took a lot of advice from dealers uh, like myself uh, and as did Sony on, and Samsung on coming up with reasonable prices at launch. So we won't see big price drops during the year because they're coming out more reasonably, which means that you don't have to feel unusually funny about buying early and paying a premium. You are paying a premium, but it's a modest premium with a very slow, um, very minimal price drop as the year moves on. I'm pretty excited about the 2022 model year. It's another very big upgrade year, as was 2021. So this is another big upgrade in both the display itself, the OLED module panel, and the processing. So we're going to see uh, a nice upgrade in image quality, uh, the overall picture quality. So um, we're going to have these up to a 97-inch screen size on the G2, and we're going to have the uh, C2 in new screen sizes, 42-inch, 48-inch, which we had last year, so that's repeating. Uh, so we'll have uh, larger screens and smaller OLED screens that will be brighter, more color accurate, and better color volume with better scaling and processing of low resolution cable will look cleaner with more detail in the image. And there's a lot more information, but we wanted to just give you some opening statements here to get this video started. So without further ado, Now there is a silver bezel on the edge. Uh, you see very, very little of it from the front, but the, the very thin edge of the silver bezel is, is apparent on the edge as well, but it's very minimal. One more thing is the bezel itself, which was a quarter of an inch last year, is an eighth of an inch this year. So this is all screen with a very, very minimalist thin bezel that's been greatly reduced from uh, the 2021 model. The chassis is all 
uh, different materials. It's much lighter, the TV. So this is our new remote. It's thinner, it's lighter, it has six different discrete hard buttons for your favorite streaming channels from the smart features that are built in. That's the IR blaster, infrared eye blaster. Yeah. We got an operator's manual and a quick setup guide. And no wall mount on the G2. Wall mounts are optional and there's new choices this year of wall mounts. There's a tripod stand, there's a swivel stand. It comes with the no gap wall mount. So that's all included. Since uh, we still don't have, and LG does not have, the three new wall mounts for the G2, we're using a Sanus wall mount. It's about $145. You set the height of the TV at whatever height you want. You rotate the TV to your liking of different viewing areas that you might have. Connection-wise, there is an IR blaster in, RS-232, coax cable antenna in. On the side of the television set, there's an optical digital out, LAN input, USB in, four HDMI 2.1 inputs with EARC support, and two more USB ins on the top of the television. All right, let's go quickly go through the, some of the settings here, but first let's check out the home screen. So this looks exactly like the C2. It's got the new home screen that looks very much like Android TV. Still pretty snappy. I do notice a little bit of jank here and there, but nothing too detrimental. But tapping on the settings button, you get your quick settings here. We get your few different picture modes. Right now it's in gallery. We've got your quick sound settings. Sound output, game optimizer, multi-view, OLED care, network settings, and all settings, which we'll jump into that. Under picture, right now, like I said, it's in gallery mode. We've got different aspect ratio options under advanced settings. We've got brightness, color, clarity. Apply all those settings that you just made to all inputs. Reset, filmmaker mode, auto start, reduce blue light, save your vision. If you want to cut down on the brightness, the OLED brightness. Under sound, we've got a few different options here for standard cinema, clear voice pro, sports music game optimizer. For sound output, we've got use TV speakers, wired speakers, use wireless speaker, or you can use external speakers with the TV speakers. Under the advanced settings, we've got Dolby Atmos, balance, EQ, installation type, so either stand mount, which is what we have right now, or wall mounting. So that'll change the EQ on the television to coincide with how you have it mounted. Automatic volume adjustment, match screen and sound, which is your delays. There's also bypass, and these are some other settings if you have audio going through, say, a sound bar through EARC or ARC. And under general, we've got your general settings here, OLED care. We've got picture care settings on and off, self-device care, OLED panel care. Under family settings, this is where you can adjust your limits for your children channels devices network settings system accessibility and the last section here is support so there's software update which we already checked user guide quick help privacy and terms and that's it all the settings that are on the c2 are exactly the same as on so the g2 the presets right now we are actually in standard and we are in warm all the way down to warm 50 but these otherwise are out of the box like I was saying on yesterday's stream that I personally wasn't that enamored when we unboxed the C2 last week. Uh, I thought it was a little bit duller looking than I'm used to, especially coming from the Samsung. But in contrast to the G2, it's clearly a brighter television set. The black levels are definitely better. Uh, colors seem to be more richer. Of course, these, these are just out of the box settings right now. What is it on Vivid or Standard or something? These are standard warm, warm 50. So yeah, so straight out of the box, standard, warm 50. Um, so as level as we can get it right now without them both being calibrated, the wind definitely goes to the G2. I mean, right here, the bright yellow on the pen, specular highlights are better. Just a much more HDR pleasing image. I mean, this specular highlights here is just way better on the G2. Blacks are better as well. You can see shadow detail a bit better between the buildings. 
where it's a little bit more muddier on the on the C2. It does seem a bit sharper, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. It does definitely seem a bit sharper and a little bit cleaner as well. I think because it is brighter and the black levels mm -hmm. like making the, uh, the image pop a bit more. So the contrast just looks better on the G2. So, I mean, for my money, I would, I would definitely go for the G2. And the reason, Shane is correct in what he said, the reason that we see more detail and more pop is because of the higher peak lumens and the way the, pro the new processor has been tuned to exploit all of the detail of every step of luminance level. So in a 10-bit panel, which these are, there's 1,096 steps of luminance. But because we can reach a higher peak lumens and therefore have a larger dynamic tonal range, and with this new processor extorting, extorting all the benefits of that, we can actually see more detail. And that's a combination of the processor and the higher peak lumens. There's a noticeable brightness here. Yes, um, On the owl is, to the yeah. left, if you guys can see that. I'm not sure you can. And I apologize, we're not in a completely dark room. We do have skylights in the gallery. Yeah. And we'll be uh, publishing uh, luminance level values on these TVs shortly as well. Well, we have this year, we have a far more, another advantage to the uh, LG's 2022 OLED module from LG Display is that the panels are much more electrically efficient. Yeah. So they draw more, much less current, but they also are natively brighter, even though they're drawing less current, which makes them run cooler. ABL is reduced. There's no ABL issue. The power supply has been pumped up, beefed up a little bit, and the panels are more energy efficient, drawing less current. So there's no ABL issue any longer. This is a PR670. Yeah. I use this right here to measure the C2, which is back here, and the G2 over right. there. So what I found is, um, and I've measured out of the box cinema mode, which is going to be the most accurate mode out of the box. And I must applaud LG because just like we saw on the 98 inch Samsung, they are they're out of the box. They are very close to D65. Very nice. Thank you. Very Samsung. close. They're not perfect, but they're very close. Let's see here. I measured from 1%, 1 1%, 5%, 10%, 18%, 25%, percent all the way up to 100% in brightness levels for both white, red, green, and blue, because all four of those numbers are important. So 1%. On the G2, white is measuring 889 nits. Uh, red is measuring 92 nits. Green, 290, excuse me, 287 nits. And blue, 32 nits. 5%, again, 8, 878 nits, 91 nits, 298, 32. So basically, it looks like from 1% through... 10% is roughly the same. The same, same values. It's right. very similar. Very close. You know, very close. 10% um, went down to 873, but that's within yeah. the margin of error. Going up to 18%, you got 568 nits mm -hmm. on um, white. Red is 89. Green is 285. Blue is 32. 25%, uh, uh, 370 nits white. Good. 87 green. Excuse me, uh, red, green is 278. Blue is 30, so 75% is 222 nits on white. Mm -hmm. uh, red is 51, green is 163, blue is 17. Let me just go up to 100 here. Mm -hmm. Full screen, white is at 158 nits. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what it was mm -hmm. last year on the uh, G2, excuse me, G1. G1 last yep. year. Yep. Right. Uh, red on this one is 35, excuse me, 36 nits. Green is 158 nits and blue is 15 nits. Mm -hmm. Now, I did a rough two point mm -hmm. uh, calibration in the service menu to get it to D65, which was really only about three or four clicks here and there. Beautiful, beautiful. Uh, and with D65, it's still reading 878 nits. Mm -hmm. uh, red is uh, 93 nits, green 303. And blue is 33 nits. Yeah. Now, the cinema mode is a dim mode. It's not the bright mode. No, 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 no. This we're, is not vivid or anything. No, this, we're speaking of HDR10. So right. it's really, that's really, there's only really one mode for any that's type correct. of HDR content. There's no day and night mode, right. contrary to what marketing tells you. That's right. Mode. <laughs> that's right. So um, that is fantastic. Um, 
and it's basically on par with my uh, A90Js. At Very home. good. Very so, good. Luminance wise, they matched it. Going to the C2. Okay, series. so those were the readings for the G2, the gallery no, the G2, series. Yes. The C2. Um, I guess the meat and potatoes is basically everyone right now cares about, again, white. But again, yeah. you need to pay attention to the other three yes. primary colors also because it matters. And we're mm -hmm. just measuring primary, of course. Not primary secondary. colors, not, second, not the secondary right. colors. 10%, which is pretty much. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, standard. So. One, one through one, five and 10% were roughly the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and they 1% uh, was at 7 Hundred and seventy nine nits mm. on white. Ten percent was at seven seventy five. See, twenty five percent was at three hundred and eighty nits on white. One hundred percent, which is full fill, one hundred and fifty nits. So full fill, the oh. difference between the G two and the C two is ten nits. Right. You're not going to tell that visual. Right. You're really not. Right. It's yeah. the specular highlights that are the popping. specular highlights. Right. Um, well. What I t particularly pay attention to when I want to see what a, a an actual just a view of an image like this and this, mm -hmm. the difference in between I will look at twenty five yes. and fifty percent. Okay. So twenty five percent on the C two is three hundred and eighty nits white, eighty seven nits red, two hundred eighty four mm -hmm. green, and thirty um, blue. Fifty percent is two fifty six white, fifty six red. Mm -hmm. 194 and 23. This is great. Um, recalling the G1 from last year, they on average, just for white 10% post calibration, they were doing roughly anywhere from 800 nits to 830 nits mm -hmm. panel variants. Mm -hmm. um, on the C1s, depending on the actual OLED module they had in it, it could be anywhere from 700 nits to 750 nits. Right. So for the C1, for me, there's really not that much difference between last year's model and this year's model, luminance-wise, at all. But for the G series, yes, there's a tangible difference. And for me, it's, it's basically going back to uh, last year's Sony models mm -hmm. and, you know, basically looking at it out of the box. And then when you, when you know how to calibrate it appropriately, mm -hmm getting squeezing all of the nits out of it it's right there on par with the g2 the g2 g1 on average can be anywhere from 80 nits brighter mm -hmm. to down all the way down to about 40 nits brighter. right so it's 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 measurable it should be visible because it again, is. It is. um when i was doing comparisons with 2020 versus 2021 models yep looking at the a90j and it had very similar variances right. between brightness levels it was visible yes so yes you should be able to see the difference between a g2 and, and a, g1. a g1 right kudos to lg for getting out of the box close to d65 i know we spoke a little bit about the screen uniformity particularly yes screen uniformity so i have been looking at that also banding wise it's essentially if I'm comparing year over year from the exact time frame, meaning the beginning of the yes. model year, there is a huge improvement um, compared to last year at the, at the beginning of the model year. You're right. Now, near the latter part of the model year for the 2021 yes. models, they are consistent with what I'm seeing with these. Right. So if you, if you want to um, purchase a 2021 model um, instead of the 2022s for whatever reason you have, uh, try to get a later model yes. because I would say probably manufactured somewhere after November 21. Yeah. When Dwayne says kudos, kudos, that's a good kudos. word. Kudos, that's a good Not word. Kudos now. <laughs> Making noodles. Kudos. Okay, that's a good word. Yeah, that's a good word. <laughs> so thank you to all LG folks for all the yeah. great work this year. Good, good year. Good year so far. Yes, indeed. Awesome.